Hey folks, welcome to Life on Beagle Road and day 21 of Vlogast. In honor of the 21st day, I'm having a local craft beer. Go get your PJs on. Yet yeah, you are being very quiet. Thank you. Get your PJs on. There is going to be a whole generation of kids with parents who were YouTubers who talk about that in therapy later. Like, I need you to be quiet. I'm filming a video. Whatever. <laughs> they all need something to talk about in therapy, right? Kenny left me alone tonight to go have a beer or even maybe, I suspect, two. So this is a perfect opportunity for me to tell you the actual story of how we got to where we are now. We planted our first garden together in 2013. That was the year that Emerson was about not quite a year old. At the time, we were living in a duplex in town and we put two raised beds in our backyard. We would later get a letter from the township saying that our neighbor had filed a complaint against us uh, because our beds were blocking some sort of uh, shared waterway. You know, instead of walking over, knocking on our door and saying, hey, um, those beds are, are causing a little flooding in my yard. Do you think you could move them? You know, they went to the township. So that was the first time we had trouble with the township. Not this township, but a different one. But you can see a theme here, right? We have trouble following the rules. What can I say? It's who I am. Not so much Kenny, but me. It's who I am very deep down in my soul. Don't follow rules. I follow rules that make sense, but if they don't make sense, psh, dunzo. In 2014, we put our duplex up for sale and we bought this house from my mom. Uh, if you've been following our channel for a while, you know that this is a house that my dad built, sits on five acres. Uh, I grew up here. And if you haven't, well, now you know that story. <laughs> I guess I don't have to tell you again. In 2015, Bridget was still a baby and Kenny built our first big garden. We made a terrace garden off what was the porch then where the deck is now. And uh, that was the first time we grew a lot of vegetables. Some of them turned out great. Some of them turned out to be a disaster. What we learned from that experience was uh, the winter sun shines on that area the summer sun does not. The following year with the garden moved to a new part of the property, we went to Virginia Beach on vacation, one of our favorite spots. And on the way back, we stopped at the Norfolk Zoo. The Norfolk Zoo, being a zoo in a city as most zoos are, had a farm animal area, which of course we visited with three small children and a mom who loves animals. There were a ton of goats. I had wanted goats since I was little and never got them. So anyway, Kenny knew this and, and had mentioned previously like, oh, we could, we could get some goats to eat the poison ivy. Well, after this trip to the petting zoo inside the Norfolk Zoo and little tiny Bridget, who was still under two at that point, hugging these goats and loving them and just adorableness. We got back in the car, started driving home and I promptly got on Craigslist and found two weathers. So there's this goat that I saw. He was so cute. I named him Ice Cream and the other goat was Fred. Our weathers were named Fred and Ice Cream. Hey, whatever floats your boat or your goat. This is the part of the story where Kenny would have you believe that I went crazy and started buying a zillion does. Like I even knew what I was doing. But that's not what happened. What really happened was me buying goats prompted Kenny to start looking up goats on YouTube. Now, back up to many years before, earlier in our marriage, when Kenny always talked about starting a YouTube channel, didn't know what it was going to be about. Uh, you know, he was really into bonsai trees at that point, but like, what the heck kind of video are you going to make about that? I mean, you could make a video like once a year. Back to looking up all these videos on YouTube and stumbles across Coghill Farm. That's right, Jason. This is actually all your fault. 
Kenny shows me this guy dancing around, growing vegetables, having pigs, having chickens. And I'm like, oh, this seems fun. And Kenny broached the subject of, hey, we could get a female goat and, and breed it and have milk. Well, say no more. I promptly put myself on a waiting list for the best dough that I could find at a price we could afford in a distance we could drive to. And a few months later, we brought Stevie Nicks home. Kenny then also said about 47 times that we should get chickens. That spring, we got chickens. Funny thing is, we got chickens long before we meant to get chickens. He went to Tractor Supply with Robbie one day, couldn't say no to him, and came home with uh, six straight run chickens. All of which, by the way, it turned out to be roosters because, of course, we didn't know at that time, if you're gonna pick out of the straight run bin at Tractor Supply, probably all roosters. Alpacas, also Kenny's obsession. He found them on Craigslist and sent me the link. Hey, there's a herd dispersal going on. Maybe we should check this out. So at this point, we've got goats, we've got chickens, we've got a big garden, and I'm loving doing all of it, but I still didn't feel like this deep connection to the food that we were producing. I loved the animals. I had fun doing what we were doing. So many of the people that we watched on YouTube talked about, you know, how producing your food is so important. And I'm like, yeah, I just don't know if that's what we're about. I mean, we always tried to buy organic when we could and we were conscious about the, the source of our food. And, you know, we live, uh, near Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, which I mean, we have fresh food everywhere. So I guess some of that is the fact that we always took it for granted. We could buy local fresh food inexpensively very easily. Then one day I was at a party and I discovered I was the person no one wanted to talk to because all I wanted to talk about was sustainably producing your own food and why the food system in America is broken. Oh, there it is. There it is. Now I'm that person. Yep. That is us. We're all about it. Bridgie, why do we grow our own food? Because we don't have much food in our thing. What? Because we don't have much food? Uh-huh. That's why we grow our own food. Okay. Is it better for us to grow our own food? Yeah. Is it fun? Yeah. Yeah? I uh, gotta wonder what Bridget's going to school and telling people we grow our own food because we don't have much food. <laughs> The other thing that evolved from this for us is just the personal growth, the satisfaction of accomplishment, the resilience that it takes to grow your own food. That was nothing I expected at the beginning of this journey and now it's completely irreplaceable as is our desire to contribute positively to what has become a very broken system of feeding the world. And in the meantime, we made this YouTube channel where I get to talk endlessly about the broken food system and gardening and chickens and goats and alpacas and cooking and everything. Okay. Chickens! You guys don't put me in a corner at a party and be like, don't go over there and talk to her. She's insane. She will trap you in a three hour conversation about organic fertilizer and composting toilets. I'm just kidding. I have never trapped anyone in a conversation about composting toilets. Yes, organic fertilizer, and I may have told them about how you just take a bucket out and scoop up some alpaca crap and dump it in your garden, but that is not the same as a composting toilet. When quarantine's over and people start having parties again, I'm gonna talk about composting toilets. And there you have it. That's how we started growing our own food and why we keep doing it. Why do you grow your own food? How'd you get started? We'd love to hear your stories. Leave them in the comments. See you tomorrow. Start dreams at all.